This is Chris Gibson, co-founder and CEO of Recursion. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Lo, the LLM orchestrated workflow engine. Lo was built by the team at Recursion's Valence Labs in order to put the power of the rapidly evolving Recursion OS at the fingertips of our scientists. Its core strength lies in its remarkable ability to orchestrate complex workflows of computational tools, experiment design and scheduling tools, and even processes leveraging third-party tools such as compound ordering. Over the next seven or eight minutes, we will demonstrate the approach by starting a mock drug discovery program together. What could take months or years in a traditional setting can now be done in weeks or months thanks to massive proprietary omics data sets spanning the genome and billions of compounds combined with powerful ML and AI-based tools. Lo allows for seamless integration and querying of all of these specialized tools, such as Recursion's map exploration tools, Matchmaker for drug target interactions, and Valence Labs digital chemistry methods. Its ability to simplify complex workflows enables any scientist to access high-level AI and computational tools using natural language. So let's get started. Our approach today in this demonstration begins by identifying protein targets associated with non-small cell lung cancer. Let's, get, let's ask Lowe to provide a list of targets involving non-small cell lung cancer. In the first step, we are leveraging public data, putting many resources and databases from across the world at the fingertips of our scientists. Our LLM is not providing these targets directly to the user, so we are much less prone to hallucinations. Instead, our LLM is calling via API a tool that has ingested much of the world's publicly available data and is giving us very high confidence results. We can see many genes here commonly associated with lung cancer, including EGFR, ALK, KRAS, BRAF, etc. As nice as it is to have access to data like this, the rea reality is that other tools are capable of providing this sort of data as well. So how are we differentiated? Well, why don't we go ahead and now dive into our proprietary data. Use recursions, QVEC map to find to five targets that have similar phenoprints to the previous list of targets. At Recursion, we have used our highly automated wet lab to generate massive experimental data sets spanning the human genome and millions of chemical compounds. With this prompt, we are using our genome-wide CRISPR knockout data in primary human endothelial cells to query those known small cell, cell, small cell lung cancer genes and ask whether there are other genes that, when knocked out, result in a similar or very different cellular morphological phenotype. We are querying trillions of relationships that we have predicted from hundreds of millions of real omic experiments conducted at recursion. You can see in the figure all the significant relationships for each gene contained in the map. In this case, we can also see that the gene RAF1 is showing up as related to many of the genes that we previously mentioned. RAF1 is a member of the RAF1 kinase family and a principal component of the MAPK signaling pathway that's been prioritized by the system. You can see it turns out as the top result. Now, ordinarily at recursion, we would be more likely to select a less well-studied gene in order to maximize the novelty uh, and the potential for therapeutic breakthroughs. But because this is a public demo, we're not going to focus on all of these genes. Instead, we're going to focus on the better studied target of RAF1 to avoid providing too much actionable information in a public demo. If we were close partners, however, we could conduct the following steps for much more novel gene associations, as we have with our colleagues at Bayer and Roche Genentech. Now that we've chosen a protein target, we're ready to create a new chemical starting point to kick off the program. We could do this in a more unbiased phenotypic way by using low to query nine-point dose response evaluations we have conducted for more than one million compounds using phenomics. But instead, let's show off some of our digital chemistry tools that allow us to take a more target-centric approach. So let's use Matchmaker, a machine learning model, specifically trained to predict drug target interactions.
All right, the matchmaker model excels in predicting the probability of interaction between any small molecule and any protein within the proteome. We have previously used this tool to predict the proteome-wide target interactions for approximately 36 billion compounds in the enamine real space. What, ma what makes Matchmaker particularly effective is its ability to make accurate predictions, even in cases where there's little or no data available for a specific protein target. It achieves this by focusing on the structure of the individual protein pockets rather than, than the entire protein, which is, enhances its predictive accuracy. You can see here that the output that we're about to get will be a 3D scatter plot showing the fingerprint embeddings of each compound. And you can also see that we've predicted the ADVET properties for each compound as well. This is a very large uh, data table for it to sort through, so we'll give it just a minute while it continues to think. Perfect. So let's look at these different molecules. You can see as I scroll over each one, uh, the various structures. And you can see now that the system is computing the ADMAT properties using our latest ADMAT prediction tools. And what's great is that if we impre improve these ADMAT prediction tools over time, the system is able to use the latest tool at every step. So here you can see for each of these compounds, various ADMAT prediction properties. And here we'll look at those that are drug-like in green. Now that we have the ADMET, ADMET properties of the top 100 active compounds for RAF1, we're going to filter them by solubility, keeping only those with the highest solubility. Now I'm going to do something really interesting, and I'm going to interact with the outside world. I'm going to ask Lowe to order these compounds. Here we're using Low to interact with the API of certain of our external chemistry suppliers. And we're actually teeing up an order through our finance team that will be ready to execute with the click of a button. All right, Low has fulfilled this request, and we can see that of the 50 compounds that we wanted to order, 46 are available externally. And because we're interacting with the outside world, we're having a human confirm this order. So I will go ahead and click accept. Done. Imagine the time savings if this is how all scientists interacted with proprietary data, public data, and even external resources like chemistry suppliers at scale. Now, for the purposes of the demonstration, we're going to have to pretend like we've waited for six to eight weeks for the compounds to arrive on site at recursion. Let's imagine this has happened and the compounds are now integrated into our on site automated Hamilton storage system, where we have the capability today to store up to 60 million compounds. Yes, six zero million compounds. What I'm going to do now is design and schedule an experiment. Design genomics experiment in HUVEC cells to test these compounds for pheno similarity to RAF1. Perfect. Now, I've used Low to call an API to our experimental design tool. This tool has been built to make sure that when you, we run an experiment, we run it not only to ask and answer the question that the user intends, are these compounds phenosimilar to a knockout of RAF1, but to make sure that we're generating all of the proper control data to make sure that everything we do here will be useful in every experiment we do in the future. Our data aggregates over time to help us build models of biology rather than just exist to answer a single question for a project today. This highlights a core cultural difference between a company like Recursion and so many others. Everything we do is about building relatable data sets over time to improve our models so that one day we can truly decode biology. You will see here again that we are asking for human approval for this dose response phenomic experiment because we are now interacting with the physical world. I'll accept this experiment and it will be scheduled and then run in dose response, where we're, we'll be looking at each of these compounds to identify whether or not they, in a dose responsive manner, mimic the CRISPR knockout of RAF1 in primary human endothelial cells. So I wanna fast forward in your mind now with this experiment scheduled and pretend like we've gotten the data back. And indeed, many of the predictions from the matchmaker tool turn out to be right. Many of these molecules uh, do mimic in a dose responsive manner the CRISPR based knockout of RAF1 uh, in phenomics. 
suggesting uh, that these molecules have a similar biological function to eliminating RAF1 expression or inhibiting RAF1. And so let's now imagine that this particular molecule right here, molecule number two, I'll cut or copy the smile string, let's imagine that this molecule has the best uh, 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 pheno phenomic signature in terms of mimicking uh, RAF1. So what I'm going to do now is using generative modeling, identify up to 50 novel molecules in the chemical neighborhood of, and I'll paste the smile string there and predict their admin properties. Okay, perfect. So now I'm using Lowe to call a generative AI model uh, that's been built by the team at Valence Labs to expand the chemical space around this early hit. So we're using generative AI here to take the starting point molecule and identif identify different molecules that are going to have similar chemical structures. And these could be starting points for our or our partner's chemists to do custom synthesis so we can kind of expand the diversity uh, of this early hit. We could then synthesize and bring these molecules back in, put them on our platform, and test them here at Recursion. Uh, for their ability to mimic the knockout of RAF1. And you can begin to see now how we are using Low to make it easy for members of our team to use the latest software, wet lab, and AI tools at Recursion to create rapid, virtuous cycles of data to advance programs. So this is a particularly intensive tool here as we use generative AI. So we'll wait just a minute. Perfect. We have generated 50 molecules here based on this initial structure. And we can actually mouse over and begin to see uh, what some of these potential drug-like molecules actually look like. So we could order these compounds through custom synthesis. Uh, we could base this off of some of their, uh, some of their properties, for example, their drug-likeness. Uh, and then we could kick off the next round of SAR. So here we are in just a few minutes using the power of low to start a potential non-small cell lung cancer program by generating a new RAF1 inhibitor. There are more than two dozen tools already integrated into low and many more on the way from our scale transcriptomic lab platform to our ML for in vivo experiment platform. We are on our way to adding even more tools to low. We've only shown you a small set of these tools today. And we've done so against a target that is well known for obvious competitive reasons. But imagine, if you will, how a tool like this, connected to what we believe is one of the most flexible and scalable wet labs in the world, could help us advance the cause of drug discovery. Thank you very much for your attention and engagement with this demonstration. And we look forward to continue sharing advancements around this project very soon.